Hey everyone, Kevin Anderson here with Healthmark Industries. Wanted to do another quick tips video for you all. This one is going to be answering the question, why are there windows on your automated washer disinfector? An important question, but before we get into it, I do want to remind you to please subscribe to the Healthmark Education YouTube channel. We're trying to make more high quality content right here available to you on this free platform. Uh, don't forget while you're here to hit that notification bell as well. Uh, so you get alerts when there are new videos for you. All right, so getting right into this, uh, why are there windows on your automated washer disinfector? The, the short, simple answer is simple. It is that we should be observing what's going on in the washer disinfector. Now, I know as well as you do, uh, in the place where I trained, uh, we would load our washer racks and a conveyor would take it all the way around and automatically load it. It would automatically select the cycle. Uh, and in fact, my back was turned to the washer machines themselves anyway. So I would, if, if I was going to observe the washer, it would have had to have been an intentional step. Well, throughout this video, I want to explain kind of what we're looking for, why we're looking for it, and uh, basically what to do with our observations. So hopefully you'll enjoy it, uh, but here we go. We're going to establish a baseline, all right? So this is a brand new washer disinfector, so a great place to start, I believe. You notice the window is very clear on both sides. The stainless steel looks great. There's no staining. There's no scaling. Um, and the light is really bright inside. Uh, equally as important is observing a brand new washer disinfector while it's actually in operation. So take a few seconds here and kind of make some observations in your mind. What do you see while this washer is running? All right, so one thing that I notice is that the spray arms are moving pretty rapidly and evenly throughout the entire chamber on all levels. There is light going throughout the entire chamber. The water is clear, which brings me to another point. Every uh, washer has maybe various different cycles, right? And all those cycles have different phases within the cycle. So you have a cold water pre-wash. You have a rinse, you have an enzymatic wash, followed by another rinse, followed by a detergent wash, followed by another rinse, followed by a thermal disinfection, and lastly, a dry cycle, right? And depending on the cycle that you choose or that is automatically chosen, you might also have a lubricant cycle as well. But why is this important? Well, when we make observations of what's going on inside the chamber through the window, right? and we notice that the water is clear, maybe in our heads we're thinking, okay, it's likely that maybe we're in the cold water pre-wash or a rinse phase, or maybe we're in the thermal disinfection phase. But you can see at a glance and have kind of an idea of where you're at in your phase. And then, you know, based on what it says on your digital screen, it'll oftentimes say where it's at, what phase it's at in the cycle. And then you can kind of compare your observation with what it says on the, on the LCD and make sure that it adds up. Does it make sense? So here's another short video clip uh, to observe real quick, and then um, I'll share with you my thoughts. All right, so same washer disinfector, brand new. Uh, the sp sprayer arms are still moving pretty good. The light's still very good. Uh, but one thing that is jumping, jumping out at me and probably to you too is that the water is obviously different. It's not nearly as clear as it was before. And that's because this is one of the detergent phases. It could be either the enzymatic phase or the detergent wash phase. Either way, we know there's something different about the water, right? And we can observe that. So why is that important? Well, if on the digital readout of your washer, it says that it's uh, in the enzymatic wash or wash one or detergent wash phase, but you actually see water that's crystal clear, like in our previous example, then there may be a problem with your detergent, whether it's the pump, the lines, 
uh, the, the detergents out, whatever it is, there could be a problem. And that's why we're doing these observations. So let's get into some other examples um, of what we kind of see and what we should be observing for. Now, this one is different in that it's clearly an older washer, um, but the windows are kind of disgusting, right? Like there's probably some lubricant or enzymatic or something um, that got caked onto the windows and has never been really adequately rinsed or cleaned off. So it's really hard to see what's going on inside the chamber. And secondly, the light that is working, by the way, is only really lighting up this top shelf area. It's not, the quality of light isn't very good, all right? But on that subject of lights, oftentimes me or my team, when we go in to visit facilities, we find the washer lights are completely out. They're not functional at all. This is just a reflection of the ceiling light, so don't pay attention to that. But this one inside the washer is out. Those should be getting re uh, replaced or repaired or whatever needs to be done, but your lights should be functioning. And if you uh, suspect that the lights are out, you know, you should be putting in a report or calling in for service or what have you. Let's look at another example of some observations uh, we can make while our washers are running. Here's another short video for you. All right, so in this one, I kind of made it obvious what I was looking at, so it probably made it obvious for you, but those spray arms were not spinning like they're supposed to. They should be whipping around pretty quickly, and clearly they two of them at least were stuck, all right? This is the kind of stuff that happens when we're not observing and watching, and we're just kind of going about our day, whether we're on the uh, prep and pack side or the decontam side. Remember, there's windows on both sides, right? So we could be observing from either side. Uh, but that's the kind of stuff that could really impact the outcome of your cleaning cycle and stuff that we should be observing for. Let's look at another example. I'm going to play this again, real short video clip. Okay, did you notice anything? I'll play it one more time. It's a real short clip. Maybe you noticed another spray arm is kind of stuck over here in this corner, all right? So when we when the wash cycle was slowing down or at the end stages, we were able to get a picture of what happened. And it turns out a fiber optic light cord fell <clears throat> into the bottom and got wrangled around the spray arm, uh, causing it to seize and not move. And clearly that caused a problem in your wash cycle. So. Perhaps it was improper loading. Perhaps it was uh, just the spray was super strong and knocked this thing out and it was kind of bad luck. Either way, uh, we should be observing for this reason because things can happen even if you did your cleaning verification tests in the morning or midnight shift whenever you do them. You know your equipment's functioning properly. Each load could have its own problem, right? So this is the kind of stuff that we should be observing for and why. Let's look at one more example before we wrap up. Here's one more video. Let me know what jumps out at you in the comments. <laughs> but of course, you know, I'm going to let you know what I think. All right. So maybe you notice the unevenness of the water, right? It's kind of concentrated over here. Well, if we compare that to our baseline that we shared earlier, where the water's going pretty evenly throughout, that should be a trigger to you to question why. Why is that happening? Especially since we have, whether you have an automated uh, feed system into your washer or you have to manually, there's some things that are going on in there that are important that we're paying attention to. So, Every washer has a water source that has to kind of connect, if you will, to the washer rack. And sometimes maybe there's just too much space there. Sometimes there might be a missing washer or something there, a gasket, if you will. Sometimes they can be even just misaligned uh, where the water is just kind of not quite lined up with the rack correctly. And so there it's going all over the, the, the chamber, but not really onto the instruments as well as it should be. So. Hopefully those examples will give you enough reason and enough um, uh, 
uh, I guess, confirmation that we need to be observing what's going on in our washers. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you uh, learned enough to take action. So number one is observe your washer, whether you're a supervisor, a manager, whether you're on the pre, uh, prep and pack assembly side and you're going to pick up new instruments, whether you're on the decontam side, observe your washer. Take a minute and glance at it. Try to understand what's going on in there. Is there adequate light? Uh, are the spray arms moving correctly? Does the wash portion of the cycle contain detergent? Are instruments loaded correctly? Is there a need to recall the load? We talk about this with sterilizer loads uh, more frequently. This is up to you guys to establish in your facility policy and procedures, but I would submit based on the things that I showed you that maybe there is justification for recalling a washer load. And for those reasons that we shared with you, perhaps those instruments aren't getting adequately cleaned when the spray arms aren't properly moving throughout. So think about that and maybe institute, institute a recall procedure in your facility. And lastly, you need to report abnormal findings. Follow your facility policy for getting your washer disinfector repaired, parts replaced, and get the service that you need. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please remember to subscribe, uh, share the video with others so that everybody can uh, understand what they should be looking for in their washer. And lastly, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for watching and uh, be on the lookout for more videos like this one. Bye.